I met you for a moment. I know who she is. I also know who you are. You got too much time on your hands. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 strangest people to appear on Judge Judy. I want you to trust me on this because I, being in your position, would never humiliate myself in front of 10 million people. <laughs> never! For this list, we'll be looking at the most eccentric litigants ever to appear on the court show. Whose courtroom behavior shocked you the most? Render a verdict in the comments. Number 20. The Guy Who Can't Stop Smiling Accused of vandalizing a friend's car, the defendant in this case can't stop smiling or laughing. Why are you laughing? Nothing so far here is funny. I'm not laughing. Look at Officer Bird. He's hardly laughing. The plaintiff isn't laughing. Your witness isn't laughing. The only fool that's laughing would be you. Between his red face and inability to keep it together, it's pretty apparent he did not show up to court with a clear head. If there's one thing Judge Judy has no patience for, it's disrespect for her courtroom. Because I didn't understand your question. You're speaking too fast. No, I'm not speaking too fast. I'm just not a fool. His airheadedness gets to the judge right away, and she can't stop herself from taking him apart bit by bit. She even does a priceless impression of him right to his face. We established a moment ago that you threw the bottle at the car, that you hit the car, and that you caused damage to the car. You said, yes, guys drunk. Even the defendant's witness looks like he'd rather be anywhere but there. Number 19. A broken clavicle or a broken side mirror. In this case, a girl ran into a car and broke her clavicle. But driver Robin Brooke believes she is the real injured party here, as the injured girl broke her vehicle's side mirror. Do you want her mother to pay for the mirror on your car? Yes, Your Honor. She collided. I was going very slowly, and it was a side impact. I did not hit her. She ran into me. Judge Judy repeatedly explains how insensitive and wrongheaded this is. The plaintiff is not hearing it, though. She is so determined that the girl's mother owes her that she can't even see how many different ways the situation could have turned out worse than it did. Get it through okay. your head. She's not fixing your mirror. You should go like this. What a tragedy this could have been. The fact that Brooke appears fairly calm almost makes her reasoning for the lawsuit that much more bizarre and harder to digest. She ran into okay. my vehicle. The case is dismissed. We're done. Number 18. The Salad Dressing Avenger. If there was an entitlement award, this guy would be a shoe-in. Mr. Erkin said you're a big baby. Okay. That doesn't Thank mean you. you're a big baby. The plaintiff sued the employees of a restaurant because they vandalized his property. Okay, that seems fair enough. However, it comes out that the man actually refused to pay for the meal he ordered, saying he had a credit due to the restaurant previously forgetting extra salad dressing with his meal. And about two weeks later, I ordered the same meal. And when the guy driver got there, I said, we have a credit, and I shut the door. Very grown up of you. Yeah. You think that was right? Apparently, without the dressing, his entire lunch became magically inedible. So the salad dressing vigilante took matters into his own hands. The judge was not having it, and neither was the audience. You want dressing for your sandwich? Go to the store and buy a bottle of dressing so you have dressing for the sandwich. But it's not the same dressing. Their salad dressing has their own taste. And Vandalism is not okay, but neither is this guy's behavior. Number 17. Man Sues His Mother Plaintiff Glenn Hazelton started off on the wrong foot with the judge. He didn't think her line of questioning about his arrest record was relevant to the current case. But what does that got to pertain to this case? Everything pertains to this case. But Judge Judy has a way of deciding for herself what's relevant. The plaintiff, who is suing his own mother for false arrest, clearly has an anger problem. At one point, he throws a fit and tells the judge to dismiss his case. If you don't want to discuss this case, then we can just dismiss it. Great, then I'm dismissing it. Thank you very much. All right, We're thank done. you. You have a good day. Judge Judy's happy to accommodate him. Once he calms down and returns to re-argue his case, the judge lets him rant and rave until he gets tired, only to dismiss his case again. I didn't do it, and this is the reason I'm suing my mother. I'm out 2,500 bucks. I could have gone after for penal soul and damages. Your case is dismissed, Mr. Hazelton. You have no case against your mother. We're finished here. Number 16, The Gasping Woman. Driving uninsured and getting into a car accident while fighting a passenger didn't endear her to the judge. 
But defendant Devisha Thomas's courtroom dramatics made a bad situation worse. I'm the most careful driver anybody. Oh no, you weren't. You weren't yes, careful that night. I read, I, your, am too I read your answer. When Thomas wouldn't answer her questions clearly, the judge grew impatient. Even when she seemingly told the truth, her answers were head scratchers. Why didn't you? Know. Just a second. He's your brother. No. Why didn't you ask him? But it was her outsized reactions and comical gasping to even the most innocuous questions that made her an instant meme. Judge Judy doesn't have time for stalling, histrionics, or nonsense. Flex and G ride. By the end of this one, she seemed like she was ready to retire. Number 15, Neighbor with a Bullhorn. Judge Judy has to sift through years of animosity between two neighbors to get to the heart of this case. Well, you're going to tell me, sir, I was going to have to see what led up to this since it does appear that for a substantial period of time, you peacefully coexisted. Truthfully, neither litigant comes off well. What should have been a trivial feud about twigs and trimmings blew up when the defendant took it upon herself to protest at her neighbor's house. We called the police on this for 12 times. He's got a lawsuit on this. He's got a priest on this plate on his fist. I didn't do it. She was captured on video spewing profanities into a bullhorn in front of his property. There's no doubt that these two have too much time on their hands, but to stand outside someone's house and scream into a bullhorn is a whole other level of obnoxious. That conduct is outrageous. I, what I'm is wrong with you? Number 14, fresh-mouthed father of 10. Denny Gonzalez decided he was the star of this show and told the judge as much. This was right after he made a crass and borderline nonsensical joke about her daughter. How many? About four. About four? What do you yeah. mean about four? What does that mean, about four? Um, about four of them, including um, your daughter. What are you talking about? <laughs> you can decide whether it was stupid or brave, but if you ask us, it's the former. Judge Judy's not having it either. She doesn't even dignify it with a real insult. That's why you came here to answer questions so that I could gather information. Do you understand? Kind of, yeah. Good. Well, perhaps if you stayed in school a little longer instead of and stayed out of the bedroom, you'd understand better. Considering how obnoxious he is, it's surprising the judge didn't absolutely wreck him in front of the cameras. It's a wonder someone would be foolish enough to even try this, especially since he was at fault in the case. You took him into your backyard, you permitted him to set up his target, you permitted him to shoot the BB gun at the target in your backyard, you became responsible. Judgment oh. for the plaintiff in the amount of $411.17. Number 13, suing a grieving mother. The plaintiff, Wendy Moore, allowed her underage son to drive her vehicle. Only on the property. I don't care if he drives it on the property, if he drives it on Pluto. He's not permitted to be behind the wheel of a car. But when her son allowed his friend to drive the car, the girl was killed in an accident. In response, Moore sued the grieving defendant, i.e. the deceased's mother, for damages. Judge Judy makes it clear she has no case, but Moore's smug expression and unwillingness to listen just makes her look even worse. I mean, do you honestly believe that you have a case? Do you honestly believe that any fact finder, whether it be a judge or a jury, is going to find your position sympathetic, Miss Moore. As heinous as this case is, there's something to be said for the way some people's minds work. Most of us would probably feel incredibly guilty if we were in the plaintiff's position, yet there are some who seemingly have no shame, and it's tough to see. You're an idiot. Judgment on the counterclaim for $5,000. Number 12, woman under the influence. The plaintiff here sues her ex-roommate over an attack with boiling water. And it is your claim that she came into the bedroom while you were sleeping and poured boiling water on you? Yes, correct. Police reports from the night indicate that there were a lot of illicit substances involved. The plaintiff, however, alleges the cop was phony, or as she puts it, Fugazi. The thing is, the report is corroborated by the medical records. Given her erratic behavior and trouble speaking, even Judge Judy wonders aloud if she's under the influence in court. I don't know what you're on now. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. What becomes clear is that this woman needs help. It's one of Judge Judy's more empathetic moments with a litigant, and we certainly feel for the plaintiff as well. What she did was terrible. Yeah. They didn't take you seriously. Yeah. And that is not an excuse for them. But part of the reason they didn't take you seriously is because you were your own worst enemy. Number 11, Tupperware Lady. This living situation went south as soon as the Tupperware got involved. You had an argument over Tupperware. Yes. 
Karina Roy, now known as the infamous Tupperware lady, got into an argument with the defendant over some missing items. Those items, of course, were Tupperware. Roy's spirited reenactment of these arguments does not impress Judge Judy. She um, opened her Tupperware cupboard and um, forced all of her Tupperware listen, on me listen, like that. Listen, let me explain something to you. Don't get dramatic with me. Her incredibly precise description of the events doesn't really score her any points either. One could argue that self-awareness is in short supply here, and that's what makes it so entertaining. Despite saying an awful lot, Roy's testimony doesn't always make a lot of sense, seemingly leaving Judge Judy, Officer Bird, and the audience hilariously baffled. I mean, I just felt hollow in here. I mean, I felt I did not I was did not feel stable at all. My driver You're not has stable. Been Number 10. Petty Ex-Friend Sues for Broken Toilet Sometimes things break. So, who broke it? I'm not mad, I just want to know. It's a natural part of life and something that everyone has to deal with. In this case, however, the plaintiff, Lisa, decided she'd rather have her ex-friend Barbara deal with it. According to your complaint, she went into the bathroom and she broke your toilet. She cracked it. You yes. want her to pay for it. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. After realizing Barbara broke her toilet by sitting on it, Lisa sued for damages. Unsurprisingly, Judge Judy was quick to call out the ridiculousness of the case and asked why Lisa thought the defendant should be responsible for her toilet. The toilet broke while she was using it. That doesn't mean that she broke it, and that doesn't mean that she's responsible for it. She didn't have a good answer and Judge Judy quickly dismissed the case as being stupid, telling the woman to grow up before determining the case closed. Number 9. Woman tries to give her mom her friend's baby. Sometimes, a situation has no easy solution. But the response to frustrating circumstances should never be violence, especially towards the people you're asking for help. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long memory. If you're going to make up stories, you're going to look very foolish and it's going to be very unpleasant. In this case, a mother sued her 20-year-old daughter for damages after she went on a bizarre rampage following her mother's refusal to take her friend's child. Your stepfather, according to you, came in and said, what are you trying to do? You want us to take this baby so that you and your friends could go out partying and having a good time? The friend was unable to support the baby, but instead of asking her mother to adopt the child legally, this woman thought it best to pawn the child off to her like a kitten. It's not like you're pawning off a kitten, you know. This is not a kitten. After hearing the story, Judge Judy was clearly perplexed by the audacity of the young woman to ask such a thing of her mother and, by extension, her stepfather. Number 8. Man Accuses Woman of Faking Death It's easy to blame a store or salesperson when something's wrong with an item days after you've purchased it. You want to return this couch? <laughs> it's cut in half. That's what I'm telling you. Did you cut this couch in there? In this case, however, the plaintiff wasn't complaining about broken furniture, but a sickly puppy. Steve Leitner had purchased the puppy from someone in a Walgreens parking lot on a Saturday and realized that it was sick the following Monday. The only sympathy I would have for you is if she masked somehow symptoms of a sick puppy and knowingly sold you a sick puppy. And you don't have any evidence of that. After being told it was underweight, he sued the woman he bought it from, insisting that she was at fault for selling him a sickly dog. He even went so far as to accuse the woman of faking her death and the deaths of her children, a claim for which he seemed to have very little evidence. Evidence that she tried to get out of this or contacting me by faking her own death and faking her children's death. Number 7. Car Salesman Who Sold One Car to Two People Car salesmen are sometimes known for using persuasive double talk to convince you to buy a vehicle, but this salesman skipped the pitch and went right to a full-on scam. Am I getting it right? You got uh, so far... There's some eight, missing parts. You've got so far... No, the simple story, and I'm a very simple girl. Salesman Robert Martin promised two separate people a car he valued at $1,500 and collected money from them both before being taken to court by the plaintiff. 
As Judge Judy points out, he was effectively paid twice for the same car. And a car that was only valued to be worth $825 at that. $825. So, sir, you are the only person who is now seeking $7,000 for an $800 car. Do you understand how stupid that sounds? Somehow, even after this revelation, the defendant still doesn't understand what he's done wrong and pushes for a $5,000 countersuit. Even more baffling? His nephew, who was promised the car alongside the plaintiff, actually agrees with him. Are you going to do that? No. Why? Because I think my uncle was in the right for what he did. Number six, defective pug purchaser. This woman is the real Karen of dog owners. Having never owned her own dog, Rachel purchased a pug from a breeder. Is this the first time you've had a dog? Since I was a child, yes. So this is the first time you've really yes. had, a, had a dog? She and her son were happy with him, and they even wanted a second dog. So far, so good. That is, until her vet told her that the dog had to be neutered, which she appeared to think meant the pug was defective. So they said I would have to have him neutered. I could not breed him. Well, they said to you it's a wise idea. Having wanted to breed the dog, she felt cheated and demanded her money back. Even stranger, she insisted she should get the money and the dog. So what you wanted was you wanted money back and the dog. Yes. She even went so far as to call the attorney general. Judge Judy scoffed at the case, pointing out that a first-time dog owner had no business breeding a dog anyway. Number 5. Potbelly Pig versus Show Dog to own a pet is to be responsible for its actions. So Doctors now you records. understand that you are totally responsible for the vet bills and the other expenses. This is a lesson the defendant, Lisa, learned the hard way. When her pot-bellied pig escaped her backyard and bit the prized show dog of the plaintiff, Deborah. Interestingly, though, this is a case where both plaintiff and defendant acted pretty strangely. I came out and I wanted to take a picture of the pig with the dog because the last time it was on the property, my husband says, are you sure a pig was on our property? Although most of the blame can be laid on Lisa and her unconventional pet, it's hard to overlook the fact that Deborah videoed her prized pooch sniffing at the unfamiliar animal for an extended period of time. She only reacted and pulled the Great Dane away when the dog was bitten by the pig. Hey! Hey! Seems like both could be better pet owners to their beloved animals. Number 4. Mustard Vandalizer It's not uncommon for Judge Judy cases to revolve around the damaging of personal property. And it is your claim that all three of these defendants vandalized your car. Yes, Judge. What makes this case so unusual is that the defendants decided to vandalize a man's car with mustard. Prior to the condiment crime, Billy Dye had gotten a restraining order against his cousin and allegedly quit the job they worked at together following her promotion. You were granted a protective order for two years. Yes. You were supposed to stay 300 feet away from him at all times, and you were supposed to refrain from exercising any contact with him, including through social media. Unfortunately, he still lived in the area and had to drive past his former workplace on the way to his new job. He said this is when she and two friends attacked, first with mustard and then with rocks. I have a picture showing that they squirted mustard all over my car. To make matters worse, the trio laughed throughout the entire trial and frequently interrupted both Judge Judy and the plaintiff. Hey! What part of be quiet don't you understand? Number three, Johnny Rotten. Although Judge Judy often deals with cases between everyday people, occasionally a familiar face will appear on her show. One such case was when Johnny Lydon, better known as Johnny Rotten, appeared on the show as a defendant against a drummer named Robert Williams. The charge? That Rotten laid a vicious headbutt on Williams during a heated contract dispute. It was a case made for Judge Judy. You would think the charges of assault, battery, and neglected payments would cause the singer to be on his best behavior for Judge Judy. True to his bad boy reputation, however, the Sex Pistols frontman consistently acted out in front of the famous judge, antagonizing and interrupting her as she attempted to hear both sides of the case. Hey, be respectful. Be oh, respectful sorry. in your house. Don't be disrespectful in my house. Surprisingly, she ended up ruling in his favor regardless, as the drummer lacked adequate evidence to support his claims. Fairly obvious conclusion. Number 2. eBay Scammer 
On eBay, most items are used, meaning what you see is what you get. But this seller took that sentiment a little too literally. She Risk. can't read. It's Risk. not my fault she can't read. When someone won two cell phones by bidding on the items in Kelly Filkinson's online shop, she instead sent two photographs of the phones that had been shown online. And you sent her two photographs of the cell phones. And you say that that's what she paid for, two photographs of the cell phones. Are we understanding each other? Yes. You're an idiot! Even as Judge Judy insulted the woman's moral compass and called her an idiot, Kelly refused to back down. Her stance was that the listing was, and always had been, for the photographs, and that the plaintiff suing her received what they'd paid $467 for. You're a thief! Outrageous! You are outrageous, madam! She even gave a bad review on the website when they complained. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pregnant Woman Busts Friend's Windshield Sometimes it's not just one person who might seem strange, but an entire case. This episode saw two former roommates at odds when one of them moved out of their shared home. Because according to her complaint, she moved in there and about a week later my friend passed away. Realizing she still had belongings there, Rosalind began blowing up her roommate Latana's phone and social media, a term Judge Judy was unfamiliar with, before giving up and enlisting the help of a friend to break in. We're blowing her up on Facebook. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> she kept hitting up robo, like over, a and over, over and over again. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. The pair successfully broke in, but got much more than they bargained for. The then-pregnant Latana allegedly emerged from the home naked, holding a knife and a stick and screaming, I'm gonna kill you, before smashing the plaintiff's windshield. Are you freaking serious? You're gonna bust my windows out like that? All I'm trying to do is get my stuff. So she's like, you're gonna get out of here, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna cut you from ear to ear. Certainly a peculiar way to come at a burglar, but Judge Judy ruled in her favor anyway, deciding the break-in justified the unconventional defense. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.